In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to the statement of cash flows. First question. A decrease in inventory should be reported on the statement of cash flows as Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it a an increase in cash flows from operating activities b an increase in cash flows from investing activities c a decrease in cash flows from operating activities D, a decrease in cash flows from investing activities, and E, an increase in cash flows from investing activities. So let's go through this again. A decrease in the inventory should be reported on the statement of cash flows as. Now, when we think about this, we're, we, you can imagine us building our statement of cash flows and we have our worksheet that we're working with. And we're basically taking the difference between all the balance sheet accounts from one period to another and, and constructing our worksheet usually using an indirect method on uh, meaning we're going to reconcile from net income to the cash flows from operations in the operating section so this is dealing with inventory the difference in inventory from one period to another inventory went down inventory decreased and we're trying to figure out okay what is that going to do on our indirect method typically in a cash flow statement now because it's a current asset and typically current asset and liabilities are in the operating section then we can think okay we're in the operating section and we're trying to think about this uh, inventory now just by just just by knowing that by knowing that uh, we're we're working in the operating section and you can kind of know that by looking at the journal entry related to inventory which when we sell inventory is to uh, is to debit cost of goods sold and, and credit inventory so there's cost of goods sold as an income statement account and therefore you would think that whatever happens here, whether it be an increase or decrease, would be in the operating activities. So if we go through these, we can probably eliminate non-operating activities. So A says an increase in the operating activities, that looks right. B says an increase in the investing activities. It doesn't look like it's investing because it's probably operating activities. C says a decrease in cash flows from operating activities. So we'll keep that for now. and. Uh, D says a decrease from investing activities and E's dealing with financing activities. So it looks like it's between A and C. And now the only question is which way do we go? Is, is, it, is there an increase in cash flows or is there a decrease in cash flows? Now, this one I would actually think about uh, if we don't really just memorize the rule, if we don't have the rule memorized, then I would try to analyze the most common type of change in a current asset type of account which is accounts receivable and then apply the same rule so if i can't remember the rule and i'm trying to kind of remember you know what happens with an increase or decrease i think about accounts receivable and then apply the same thing to inventory or any other kind of current asset and then the reverse to liabilities if you try to reconstruct things too many things then you're going to spend too much time on the test that's why i recommend just thinking okay accounts receivable uh, if I think about accounts receivable, what, what really happens if there's a decrease in accounts receivable, what's the journal entry related to a decrease in accounts receivable? That would be uh, accounts receivable is going to be credited. $100, let's say, and we're going to debit the cash. That's when accounts receivable goes down. So what is that going to do to our cash flow statement? Remember what we have is net income. On the cash flow statement which is on an accrual basis and if if the accounts receivable went down that means this journal entry happened more than the than the increased journal entry which is a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to sales so in this case what's happening here is the accounts receivable we're getting cash and we're not recording revenue so that means net income here doesn't include the revenue related to this cash we received why 
because we recorded the cache in the prior period. But we need to, under the under the cache method, uh, rec record the net income or the cache in the net income for this period if we're under a cache basis because we got the cache. So that means if we'd have to increase the uh, net income if this asset account, the accounts receivable, uh, decreased. Because if accounts receivable decreased, that means we got cash. So that would have to increase net income. So then I would just apply that same rule that it's going to be an increase. If something goes down, if an asset goes down, that it's going to increase the net income. So here it is here, an increase in cash flows uh, from operating activities. So there it is. And you, and you might just want to memorize the rule, which is basically that if, if an asset goes down, we're going to increase the cash flow statement and it's the opposite for uh, liabilities. So if liabilities uh, go down, we're going to decrease the cash flow statement. But it's useful to be able to think through it with at least one example and I would use the example of accounts receivable and then apply the reverse rule to any liabilities or use accounts payable as your example for any type of liability account and then apply that same principle to all other liabilities. If you go and think through accounts inventory You'll get to the same result, however, because of the difference between cost of goods sold and accounts payable, it's a little bit more confusing to get there, and you'd rather just get the rule and understand the rule through accounts receivable and then apply it elsewhere. Next question. Which is not included in cash flows from investing activities? A. Cash paid to purchase equipment. B. Cash paid for dividends. C. Cash paid for intangible assets. D. Cash paid for securities. E. Cash received from the sale of equipment. Let's go through this again using the process of elimination. Which is not included in cash flows from investing activities? A. Cash paid to purchase equipment. So for these I would go through each one of these and basically go through our thought process which would be to think of a journal entry and then think of an income statement account if it's related and then think if, if it should be investing. So here we go. The cash paid for the purchase of equipment. Journal entry. Debit equipment. Credit cash. So if we debit equipment and credit cash are either of those income statement accounts. No. No income or expenses. Therefore not operating activities. Did we buy anything uh, that was of substantial value? We did. We purchased the equipment. And therefore it's an investment. So it's an investing activity. B says cash paid for dividends, journal entry, credit cash, debit, uh, retained earnings, or dividends, retained earnings, some kind of equity account. Uh, is, are either of those going to be income statement accounts? No. No revenue. No expenses. Did we purchase anything of substantial value? No, we didn't purchase anything. We paid the owners. We gave money to the owners, to the stockholders with a dividend. Therefore, it's not operating and not investing. Must be financing because we're basically paying back the owner for the investments that they've put into the company. And then C, cash paid, so that looks like good. C says cash paid for intangible assets, journal entry, credit cash, debit, intangible asset. Are either of those accounts income statement, revenue, or expense? No, therefore not operating activity. Did we buy something of value that we're gonna use in the future, investing in it? Yes, we did, we bought intangible. So that looks like an, an investing activity. D says cash paid for securities. And again, securities like our stocks or bonds, we would think. So that looks sounds like an investment. So we bought an investment. So you would think that would be an, an investing activity. And then E says cash received from the sale of equipment. And that one journal entry would be uh, debit cash, credit equipment, debit accumulated depreciation, and then possibly have a debit or credit to uh, gain or loss, depending on if there's a gain or loss. And is there an, an in income statement account there? Yeah, there's a gain or loss. So you might think hmm, maybe that should be operating activities. So between E and B are the last two here. Uh, let's go through this again. Which is not included in cash flows from investing activities? Between B and E, I would think that B is more secure, we're gonna say. That sounds pretty much like financing. Uh, and I would think that C or E would basically be uh, investing because we're dealing with in equipment which we invested in. We sold the equipment which we invested in. Now it does have an income statement account in the journal entry, but 
that's really not a cash flow component. The cash flow component is us selling the equipment, the cash that we got for the sale of equipment. The gain or loss is kind of over and above the cash we got. So in any case, it's going to be the cash we got is for the sale of equipment and will be in the investing activities. Next question. The statement of cash flows does not report A. Cash flows from operating activities B. Cash flows from financing activities C. Cash flows from investing activities D. Non-cash financing and investing activities and E. Net income on an accrual basis Let's go through this again using the process of elimination. The statement of cash flows does not report A. Cash flows from operating activities. Well, that's one of the major sections, so I would think that it reports that B. Cash flows from financing activities. That's one of the major sections, so I don't think that. C says cash flows from investing activities. Once again, those are kind of like the main three sections. D says non-cash financing and investing activities. That one we might go, hmm, why would it report non-cash stuff? But maybe not that, I'll keep that for now. And then E says not net income on an accrual basis. And then we might think, well, it's kind of net income like on a cash basis, kind of not an accrual basis. So I'm left with D and E. Let's go through this again. The statement of cash flows does not report either D, non-cash financing, financing and investing activities, or E, net income on an accrual basis. Now of the two, it's actually, I would think that E doesn't sound right because that's what the income statement does. The income statement has net income on an accrual basis. The, the statement of cash flows might because it, on the indirect method, we kind of, we start with net income on an accrual basis, but our really the, what we're trying to get to is not net income on an accrual basis. We're trying to get to, um, income on a cash basis or, or receipts from operations cash flows from operations so we could get technical and say well net income is on the statement of cash flows but that's not really the goal so i don't think i don't think e is what they're looking for d doesn't sound right really but i think e is the right answer because or d is the right answer because d says non-cash financing and investing activities and um those are going to be items that we're going to report either at the bottom of the cash flow statement or in the notes to the cash flow statement. Why would we re report things that are non-cash on the cash flow statement or at least on notes related to the cash flow statement? Because these are things that are kind of like things that uh, they just basically kind of bypass the cash. I mean, if we, if we, for example, bought equipment, but we got a, took a loan out and we financed the entire piece of equipment, we would debit equipment for a hundred dollars and we would credit a loan payable and so why does that have anything to do with cash why do we need to have a note or any kind of thing dealing with cash related to that uh it, what because what really happened is you can think of this as two different journal entries you can think of it as well we kind of just combine two transactions here which would be that we get cash of a hundred man that's bad of a hundred in order to and we took out a loan of a hundred and then we turned around and took that hundred dollars and bought equipment for a hundred and we paid cash so you can think of it as basically there is kind of you can think of it as if there were cash it would be reported in two journal entries and we just kind of cut out the middle person and, and just didn't report the cash and therefore you know it's kind of like a finance this would be a financing activity and this would be an investing activity so it's kind of like we took a financing activity, investing activity, and netted it together and didn't have the cash flow. But if we really think about it, we kind of have two two things happening there. That's why it's it's something that's not cash related, but we still put a footnote in related to the cash flow statement for it.